guys. Welcome to my Facebook Live show. Every week on Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, I show up here to share strategies, um, tips, resources, trends, all relating to PR, all relating to how you can provide the absolute best service possible for your clients. My goal for you is to run your own PR agency on your terms, um, keep your clients in the door, keep them happy, turn you into a pitching powerhouse, and uh, you know, make more money. Let's be real, that's why we're here. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jen Burson. I'm the founder of Generation PR, and uh, we are 16 years in business running our agency in Los Angeles, representing beauty and cosmetics, baby and kids, and health and wellness brands. Um, our agency, <clears throat> excuse me, has represented uh, billion dollar brands in each of our niches, which is so cool and crazy. And I just wanna share with you all the strategies that we've learned along the way so that you can work with your dream clients too. Um, the other thing that I do, this little logo in the corner, hi Mo. See, it's hard to know like where I am, but my little logo on the corner. Um, we also have created this profitable PR pros community. I wanted to create a community that would lift each other up. I wanted to share resources. Um, you know, back when I started 16 years ago, there was nothing available for me to learn industry best practices, to connect with other agency owners that were like-minded. Uh, it just didn't exist. And so when you start, you're kind of creating all this, hi Yvette, you're creating all this in a vacuum and there was a learning curve. And I feel, look at these, look at these just amazing entrepreneurs that are here. Hi, Brittany. Mo and Brittany were on our Agency Accelerator Plus coaching call yesterday. Really, really good. Uh, guys, I thought yesterday's call was so awesome. I thought the discussions we had were so helpful. Um, Brittany asked some incredible questions and then shared those questions in the group so we can get additional feedback. So other entrepreneurs, hi Barb, can um, learn from her really thoughtful questions. Um, and that's the kind of community that we're building here. So that was the Agency Accelerator Plus group. That is the members who are going through the program that I've created that helps you launch, grow, and scale a profitable agency. And then they are part of our continued coaching, mentorship, accountability, and community aspect of the program. So it's called Plus, we do monthly coaching. There's a special private like secret group that is super helpful. We also share um, new business leads. Mo is saying, I love those calls. The community is awesome. I agree. And I felt like yesterday's, I was like, wow, these women are so smart. And um, I love how it's all very topical. Um, something that somebody asked is something that we were dealing with specifically that day in our agency. And so we were able to have like a very timely discussion. And that's what this conversation is about today. The, um, the discussion, well, you guys know, I always create topics around what you wanna know. And this has come up quite a bit. How do you handle a media opportunity falling through last minute for a client? We have been asked over and over. Um, and so I wanted to just have a discussion with you and answer your questions about it. Um, and we're gonna continue the call, continue the chat tomorrow on Clubhouse. Um, and if anybody wants to join me on stage in Clubhouse, just let me know, um, follow me. We can add you as a moderator or join that call tomorrow. I think it's at one Pacific. Let me just make sure. Yes, one Pacific tomorrow. Um, because I want to have hot seat coaching live discussions about it. So we're going to extend that for tomorrow. But for today, um, we're going to just walk through kind of how we in generation and how we kind of um, support our agency accelerator members to handle something like this when it happens. So the very first thing before anything is to know that when you are providing PR services to clients, it's extremely important that your client's expectations are reasonable, realistic, and most importantly, aligned with what your results are likely to be. 
or what you expect your results to be because we have found the number one source of client dissatisfaction, which means they're gonna bounce and leave your agency, is that the results you get are not aligned with their expectations. Sometimes we think, oh my God, this happened to us with a client. <laughs> we were like, we are crushing it. Like we're crushing it. And that same day, we we did like a three month campaign for a beauty brand and our team was like, we are friggin' rocking this. Like this client must be so happy. Like this is so great. We submitted it for an award. That day I hit submit, this was like six, seven months ago. And we just found out that we won first place in that award we submitted for. So I feel kind of vindicated that we actually were doing such a great job. It's an industry award, Reagan's PR Daily. We won first place for best beauty lifestyle um, or beauty fashion uh, lifestyle campaign of all of 2020. Um, but the second I submitted for that award, literally like within two minutes, it was just crazy ironic. I got an email from the client saying, thank you so much for, for getting us to this place. And now that we're here, <laughs> we can go work with this big agency that we couldn't work with. So thanks for all that you've done to get us to this place to leave you. So we were like, what the frick? Like, did that really happen? Um, so I, in that instance, I don't know that our uh, results were out of alignment. Certainly our expectations of what would happen if we did a great job were out of alignment. But usually clients leave because they are dissatisfied. And that dissatisfaction comes from expectations not being met. So the very first thing you must do is be really clear, even if it's, not exactly what they're looking for. You know, you want to kind of under promise and over deliver. You want to make sure clients don't have these wild and crazy expectations that no matter how great of a job you do are very unlikely to be met. Okay. So you have to start out by having those challenging conversations. Um, we talk a lot about this in the agency accelerator. It's all about setting up and managing those expectations with your clients. Because if you are not on the same page, this is where issues start dissatisfaction. This is where the seed is planted for them to, to leave and feel like they're not getting what they paid for. Um, so we also know as PR professionals that nothing is guaranteed until you are holding it in your hand or staring at it on your computer. Seriously nothing is guaranteed, no matter what um, your media contact promises, no matter if your client is standing in the studio waiting to go on air because they can get bumped. It happens. We have had major features fall through. Like one example, this one, <laughs> this one hurt. We had a client booked on Oprah's favorite things, the TV show the one where everybody loses their minds and they get everything that Oprah loves in the audience and everybody's screaming and crying, that Oprah's favorite things. We have had clients featured in Oprah's favorite things in the print magazine, so incredible, still incredible. But like one of my goals as a PR professional was Oprah's favorite things and we landed it. Um, we've gone through all the hoops and hurdles and we confirmed everything. We overnighted samples, we confirmed stock, and we also had the client ramp up production per the producer's recommendations because we knew there would be such a demand for the products. We updated the website bandwidth to meet the demand of high traffic um, and we were ready, right? And then at the last minute, you guys, like this was, this was probably the biggest gut punch I've ever experienced. Um, we were cut out of the segment for a competitor that was ultimately at a more reasonable price point because they had better national accessibility for their products. So, I mean, when I tell you we were guaranteed, my contact like, you know, my contact like flew us to Chicago, not flew us, like we went to Chicago, uh, had us in the second row of, of Oprah, like took us around the offices. Like I had a great relationship with this contact. I still am connected to her to this day. She obviously is no longer working at Oprah, but um, she was like, you guys are in, this is happening. We're so excited. We love these products. And then she called me and she sounded like she had, I mean, it was like the most dejected sounding voice. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, mm. right. Um, 
And it happens. And, you know, we had to kind of tell the client, I'm so sorry, but this is what happened. So we ha- that was a luxury line and the price point was like triple what the product, it was a bathrobe that they ended up featuring. Um, something that had more national accessibility and a more mass market price point. So that was incredibly frustrating, um, you know, but part of our job is to communicate with our clients what they can reasonably expect. And I think letting a client know that a press feature is not guaranteed until they're holding it in their hand or staring at it on a computer, um, that's one of the things we have to communicate. Um, Let me know if you're still here. (laughs) I see quite a few of you are here, but nobody's got any reaction to my Oprah story, the gut punch. Imagine if that happened to you. You had a client that was like absolutely going to be on Oprah's favorite things. And the day of production, they were like, sorry, someone else squeezed into your spot. Sucked. It was terrible. It was awful. No good, very bad. That was about, I don't know, two, three years into into me running my agency. Um, And I was like, look at me, I'm just crushing it. And then that was just... Um, but anyway, obviously we bounced back. We ended up working with that brand for 11 years, so it didn't have a negative impact. Um, and I think they realistically knew that there was nothing that could have been done. But, um, the other thing that you have to do with your clients is, um, you know, letting them know nothing's guaranteed. That's the first step is making sure clients know that sometimes features get pushed, news cycles change quickly, things can get adjusted last minute, um, that it's out of our hands. And um, one of the things we discussed on our call yesterday was around pay to play and a lot of these new agencies popping up that are offering guaranteed media features. And the way that they're doing this essentially is kind of buying wholesale real estate on um, different media outlets, partitioning it off and selling it at a premium. So, um, you know, and what ends up happening there is that editors do not want to work with these brands that they see are getting, um, they will do their research and they will see that these companies, these clients, entrepreneurs are paying for features. And that undermines the um, editorial uh, authority and credibility for a lot of these. So the writers that are legit are feeling that that undermines their you know, editorial opinion. And um, it also, you know, it kind of takes away from them and the work that they're doing. And it's also seen as shady. So as a policy, our agency does not work with brands that want, that pay to play or want to pay to play. Um, That is obviously not how PR works. Essentially what's happening is these companies are writing stories and they're just putting them up almost as advertorial, but the reader doesn't know that. And it undermines the creative integrity and editorial integrity of these writers that we are working so hard to build relationships with. So for us, it's toxic. We don't want to touch it. Um, We are working on earned media. And there are agencies out there that are trying to undermine. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of this. Um, It's come up quite a bit in our groups. But what's happening is clients are like, well, I only want to pay for features that we're getting. And we all know as PR professionals, earned media is not guaranteed. And the best kind of features are the ones that are um, based on an editor's opinion. They're writing and highlighting a brand that they believe in. They want their readers to know about. Those are the ones that really drive consumer demand and um, create a genuine affinity for the products. So that is what we are going for. So we need to make sure clients know that, you know, we're working on these um, these features that are based on, um, you know, editors finding time, finding the right fit, us kind of convincing, um, and somebody can be interested, but until you see it, it is not guaranteed. So we need to make sure clients know that they can sometimes get pushed. It is not a pay-to-play opportunity. That's not what they're here for. So if one of your media opportunities falls through, the best policy for clients is honesty. You know, obviously it's not personal. Don't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. Let your client know that you're following up with that journalist frequently to see if there's still an opportunity. Um, You know, maybe the schedule can, uh, maybe the feature can get rescheduled and maybe it's postponed, something like that. And because you put it, Um, uh, and because you put in the work to get all of the content in place, 
it's really a solid story angle. And the other thing you can do then, knowing that one journalist was interested and for whatever reason their availability shifted, now you can use that as a great solid pitch for other relevant outlets. So you know you have a winning pitch there. So if it's an interview and the content is already created, um, you can take that content and create other story angles around it and pitch it to other outlets. So all is not lost. There's still a solid, interesting pitch angle that you can use elsewhere, and you're going to continue to follow up with the original contact. And if that angle is no longer timely or relevant, you can go back to them with kind of an adapted angle since you know that that journalist is somewhat interested in your client or interested in their products. So, um, you know, the other thing that you can do is in our uh, Pitch Lab community. So, we, like I said here, you have um, something that's timely and relevant. And if that timing shifts, it's no longer timely and relevant. So we focus on mastering the art of timing and relevance in the Pitch Lab. That is the entire foundation of that program. It is all about turning you into a pitching powerhouse so that you are always matching your client's pitches with what editors want to know and exactly when they want to know them. Um, and one of the things we offer are these um, monthly execution plans where we give, I mean, they're probably at this point 30 or so pages long, completely laid out on what you need to be focusing on exactly now in your short lead and your long lead pitches. And we have just added a feature, guys, if you guys here, Brittany, Mo, and Barb, haven't really seen in the last couple months, we've added actual publications and what their editorial focus is. So you can start to strategically pitch those specific publications for what they're working on. Um, we, you know, we don't have every single one, but there's uh, dozens of them basically. So it's like Allure is working on, you know, um, best hyaluronic skincare in August. So you can pitch long lead. And then maybe you also start thinking about other outlets that would be relevant that same idea at the same time. Candace, hi Candace, Candace is in there too. Um, so that you could master that art of timing and relevance using things that we know media is thinking about when they're thinking about it. Um, uh, Angela, hi, need to get prompts for your Pitch Lab Lives. What do you mean, Pitch Lab Lives? We have a monthly coaching call, and if you're in the program, we send out reminders, we give you the dates in advance, we do it once a month, um, if that's what you mean. Otherwise, there's no Pitch Lab Lives. This is the, the live content that I do. Um, yeah, this was such a great value add. Thanks, Barb. I am so excited about it because I'm always like, I wonder what so-and-so is working on at this exact moment. The other thing we love is that um, our, our members are using these to be extremely in the know when they're having sales calls with prospective clients. So they can sort of like, I love the name drop aspects like, oh, you know, we happen to know that as you're talking to them, you say, well, they're focusing on long lead and these are the long lead things that they're looking at. And you can say, well, this publication is working on this in August and you can start to on the call. Okay, good, Angela. Yeah, so we um, check your email because we always send out a reminder and it's also in the group. So if you're in the pitch lab, we give you the dates in advance. It's pinned to the top. Yeah, so you won't miss it. But we'd love to have you on the calls. They're super good. And the other aspect of this that I wanted to mention with regard to the topic for today how you handle a pitch that kind of gets rejected or, or not rejected, but canceled at the last minute. What are we calling it? When it falls through. So you can continue to follow up with that editor, but you can also ask them specifically, you know, um, can you let me know what might have happened or is there any other um, additional information you can provide to me about anything you're working on where this might be a good fit, you know, down the line um, and see if they'll give you feedback because now you have a, an open dialogue with this contact. And, you know, they, there's a lot of journalists that are PR friendly. We make their job easier and they'll, they want to find a way to help you and they want to find a way, you know, to let you know how you guys can work together because you are providing them with something useful and helpful as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is relevant, strategic, targeted pitches so that it's not like spray and pray. If you're sending a pitch specifically to them and positioning it as relevant to them, um, you know, you're helpful to them. So you're having a dialogue. They know that you know your stuff and that you know what they're about and that you're gonna feed them 
relevant story angles. Um, and then you can also come back to the Pitch Lab community and say, hey guys, this is what happened. Um, you know, we were all lined up for this outlet. We have this great pitch. Any ideas on where we can repurpose it? You know, you've got a winning pitch, so let's repurpose it so you can get more mileage out of it. So all is not lost. Stay on top in a non-harassy way. You know, that's our style around here is, is helpful adding value, staying on top of it with that contact and saying, hey, you know, um, I have something else for you. Um, if your schedule's opened up and you're looking to feature things around, you know, so-and-so for summer, skincare, uh, you know, SPF for summer, I have something relevant for you, um, you know, so that you are providing something helpful. And, you know, it stinks that that contact maybe didn't follow through on something it's helpful to know maybe what happened so that you can share it with the client, but you may not always know. You may not always know. And if clients think that you're going to have answers all the time and be able to say, well, this one fell through for these four reasons, um, you might not be able to provide that. You can possibly let them know generally what's possibly happening. Um, one of the things that we submit, we uh, created um, in the agency accelerator, it was actually submitted by one of our members, Natasha Dressler, who so generously gave us a kind of state of the state email that she crafted for clients to show them what the current media landscape looks like right now. And um, we turned it into like a general template that we shared in the agency accelerator so that our members could grab it and share it with their clients. Something like that is really helpful. So you can still, even though you're reporting bad news and saying, oh God, I'm so sorry this fell through. Well, I don't know the exact reasons. Here's the current media landscape. This is kind of what editors are dealing with and what we're dealing with. So you have an understanding. Yeah, that's in there, Candice. Um, let me know if you need help tracking it down. It's a really great template and it just, it, I just always want to empower you with information so that you can provide the best service possible and have your clients see you and know that you are the authority in the space, that you know you are dialed in. Um, where's the info on the agency accelerator? Candace, you're in it, right? Um, you mean for that specific resource? Because we can send it, I can send it to you, but are you asking about joining the agency accelerator? I thought you were, I thought you were in there. Let me know if I'm confused, but um, I don't know. We've just been part of each other's world for so long, Candace. I just kind of like assumed you were in there already. I think you are, I don't know, let me know. But um, yes, we can share that resource if you're in the agency accelerator, it's really good. And I just want you guys to be able to give the best service possible to your clients. Sometimes that means delivering bad news in a way where, you know, it's aligning. Oh, girl. Okay. You, I can't believe you need to come. I will just drop it here. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think it's open now. We kind of just like quietly put the, um, here, you can just check it out. Um, and if you guys enroll in the agency accelerator, um, after you enroll, there's an opportunity to join plus, which is our monthly coaching program that goes along with it. And the group is awesome. Like the group is so good. Those calls are amazing. That's what we had yesterday was a plus call. It was so good. Um, but yeah, so it's all about kind of setting expectations. That's the very first thing that you do to help get your clients on board and aligned with what is reasonable and realistic that they should expect. Um, and you might have to have hard conversations with them to align expectations, but you should be doing that when you very first start working together. It shouldn't, that shouldn't be after a media um, opportunity falls through. Like, oh, by the way, let me tell you what sort of happens with the media. Let me tell you how they work. You need to let them know in advance. So when something like that happens, as gutting and sad and frustrating as it is for, for you and for them, Usually I think sometimes it's more frustrating and sad for us. Don't you feel like that? Like you're so excited. You're like, yeah, I'm crushing it. We're going to have this amazing win. It's like going to make us look so good. And then it falls through and you're like, Ugh. and again, don't take it personally. But a lot of times you're feeling it more than a client because they don't know how hard you work to make that happen. Right. They just are like, oh, you got me, you know, 
great. You got, you got us pressed. Thanks so much. Like, this is really wonderful. We're so glad that this outlet loved our products or that they're interested in telling our story. Um, but they don't see everything you put into it. So, um, and that's part of your job is to make it look effortless and, um, you know, all of that. But if it falls through the first time, yeah, they just don't know, Angela, they don't know. <laughs> and like, sometimes we have to tell them in advance so that they have an awareness of like how the sausage is made. I know you've probably heard that expression. It's like, what is going into all of these things that we are doing for them? That conversation needs to happen up front. Because like I said, so anyone who's in the agency accelerator, the framework is, it's called the path to profitability framework that I created. It is four pillars, strategy, sales, service, and scale. That's the four pillars to growing and scaling a profitable agency. And the whole premise is around creating consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. Consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. My favorite, consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. Five words, my favorite five words. Best five words ever. Best business model ever. Consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. The best, okay? My husband's like, you have the literal best business model ever. We're doing a contract right now and we're like having a discussion with the client. Results are not guaranteed. We get paid in advance. That's how it goes, right? This is industry standard. Consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue. Revenue. Say it with me, guys. So <laughs> saying it five times. Yes, Angela, right? So um, part of the recurring aspect and the consistent and predictable aspect is clients that are on retainer are not leaving, right? You want to, you want, you don't want just like three and six month contracts. We look at contracts like this is the start, but we want to have this be a, a, an ongoing relationship. And all of our current clients, um, yeah, all of our current clients have extended their contracts beyond the initial period. Um, like I said, I worked with one brand for 11 years. We've worked with many brands for three, four, five, six years. Um, that's what you are going for. You're not trying to just get a six month contract and keep trying for six month contracts and then those clients leave. The foundation is service. That's one of the pillars. And service is extremely important. Um, or what's it, extremely important to service is making clients happy. And that means that they have to have their expectations met which means you have to set their expectations. So part of setting their expectations is press falls through. Unless you are looking at it on your computer or holding it in your hand or seeing it on your TV, nothing's guaranteed. And that's the very first step, right? Like confirming, um, hey, Natasha, um, you came on late, but I was talking about you, Natasha, and that amazing resource you shared with us in the agency accelerator, um, giving all of us like a really wonderful template for, uh, for um, the state of the state and how we can talk to clients. And I think that that is also relevant in explaining maybe how some of these media opportunities fall through. So that's, you know, what I have for you today. It all comes back to, Angela, say it with me, consistent, predictable, recurring retainer revenue, which means keeping clients happy, which means even if media falls through, optimizing those pitches that got an editor's attention in the first place, pitching it somewhere else, um, figuring out what happened, yes, um, you know, and not taking it personally. It's not personal. Nothing about this is personal. It's just not personal. Nobody is saying like, well, I like the idea, but I don't like you, so... No, <laughs> you know, that's just not how it works. So um, yeah, that's what I have for you today. It happens to the best of us. Honestly, it happens to the best of us. Um, you know, what we do in the pitch lab, it's so funny, but it sucks. It totally sucks is my last, <laughs> is my last bullet point. We always like talk through this. Hi, Angel. Um, okay. We'll see it. We're going to extend the conversation tomorrow on Clubhouse. And I know you're on Clubhouse, Candace, so we'll see you over there. But, um, you know, yeah, that's my last bullet. But it sucks. It totally sucks. So um, we talk about the Pitch Lab is all about um, creating unique story angles, um, repurposing pitches that are attention grabbing. So even if that one doesn't get run, 
Um, we get ghosted or we get told something's running, but we definitely get ghosted or we get told something's running, but looks around. Yeah. Um, it happens, right? And if you set clients expectations in advance, which I know Natasha does, um, you know, then you have a higher likelihood of getting that client on board when something like, you know, on your side, right? Like your client, you are a proxy for your client. You are not an adversary with your client. You are partners with them. So you definitely want them on board with the way things actually are because, um, you know, their expectations are aligned with what's reasonable. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. I'll stay on here for another minute. We've been getting really good questions at the end and that's why we have um, Clubhouse because we want to have an actual dialogue um, and extend the conversation. So we're doing a Clubhouse tomorrow. If anybody wants to like be on, um, on the stage, on the panel to discuss, let me know. Follow me on Clubhouse so that we can um, get you into that chat tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific. And then we also have this really great, uh, sort of sort of brand new um, PR insider secrets that we've developed that is literally like your industry peers. We asked you, oh, you were on Clubhouse. Yeah, Natasha's all over the Clubhouse. Um, we ask, we asked all of you in our community what you wanted to know from your peers, what um, you, your burning questions were on running your agencies and then also landing top tier media. And we assembled a panel of really successful PR pros and had them answer your questions. And so that resource I just linked to here, our PR insider secrets is really good. Um, and Angel Angelina, hi, is saying, how do we learn about Clubhouse? You mean in general, what is Clubhouse? Or you mean about my panel that we're doing tomorrow? Um, in general, Clubhouse is this new, not so, I mean, it's new, it's new. It's a social media platform that is essentially audio only, consider it like live podcasting. And at this point, the audio does not record, so you have to be in the room it's like being in the room where it happened. Um, people can ask questions. It's kind of off the cuff, audio only. You have to be invited, but it's not like as exclusive as it sounds. It's literally like somebody that's already in there has to have your number in their phone. And then if you request to join and they log in, they'll see you and they can add you. Sometimes we have um, invites as well. Um, so ask your friends. I might have some invites left. Sometimes you log in and they give you more invites. So um, if you really want to get in Clubhouse, Angelina, just DM me and I can find a way to add you. Um, but it's really cool. There are some interesting conversations happening. Um, I feel like the marketers have also kind of infiltrated. So it's very like markety, which I don't love, you know, um, I mean, I guess I'm a marketer, but I just want to talk to you guys and figure out ways that we can all be better at running our agencies and that we can all make more money at it. Um, I do as well. Yeah. Um, Angela, I'm not exactly sure what you say I do as well. You want a clubhouse invite? If that's the case, DM me. I might have some, okay? Um, but we'll have the chat tomorrow over there, 1 p.m. And we're going to add the kind of clubhouse after hours, we do a Facebook Live every single week, you guys know that, and then this is gonna be the extension of our discussion, and that means you can get in. Okay, let's get you on Clubhouse. Just send me a DM, I'll find a way to get you guys on, um, Angelina and Angela. Um, but it'll be like, kind of like after hours. Yeah, DM me. Um, and we'll be able to have back and forth conversations. I'm also talking about doing live hot seat coaching, um, bringing on other kind of experts in um, the PR realm, like Crosby Norix, who is just so wonderful and lovely. If you're not a member of her Pitch Please community on Facebook, go join that. Very similar vibe to, to Profitable PR Pros, very collaborative, um, very warm and helpful. And Crosby is just the best, she's super smart. And um, we do a lot to kind of promote each other's programs because we feel that we um, supplement and our stuff really aligns to give you the best possible experience. We might be joining forces to offer something really special in the next few months, TBD. 
Um, but you know, doing hot seat coaching and things like that is a really cool way to be live and interactive on Clubhouse. So we'll have that chat tomorrow at one. Um, tomorrow for sure. Awesome, Natasha. If you want to come on stage, just hit me up. Um, let me know, guys, if there's any other questions you have. Um, I will tell you that right now we are in the contract negotiation phase with our brand new client. Their leadership team is in China. <laughs> So, and Mo will be there, awesome. Um, wait till you guys see Mo and Natasha's case study videos. We are creating the most beautiful, compelling case study videos for these two absolute powerhouses in our programs. And I'm so excited to share their stories. Um, I'm so excited for you two to see how they're coming out because they look amazing, like amazing, amazing. It's so exciting to me, I'm like, I want to do them for everyone and Miranda's like calm down <laughs> like they're very expensive and I'm just like let's have videos for everyone but um she's like it's it's a lot of work and you just need to like simmer down but I you know I want to tell everyone stories but um yeah so the contract the client in Asia um the the U.S. team here is like we're ready we get it PR's you know not guaranteed we it's not our first rodeo the team in China has slashed every single thing in our contract that protects us. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Mo. I'm excited for you to see it. So essentially what they have done is eliminated like our um, late fee, they've eliminated our um, uh, termination fee. So if we enter a six month contract, we want that to be a guaranteed six month payment. Um, and if they end it early for anything other than cause, they are responsible for the six month. They cut that out entirely. They cut out the part that says that results are not guaranteed, which as we all know, guys, that is an industry standard. Yes. Hi, Jack. Hi. Hi. Um, so, and then there was one more thing they cut and I'm just like, why are, why do we even have oh, such red flags? I know, but Angela, you are so right. However, the U S team, once this contract is done, it's done. So, and I'll never have to deal with them. And they already have my bank info. They want to um, just automatically deposit, you know, so um, is that a thing? Can they do that? Well, we are currently getting back to them. And I'm gonna, I think the strategy here is we have to convince the US team who is the, the liaison to the contacts directly in China to, com to make a compelling argument that our KPIs are clarified it's an addendum in the contract and that um those are the things that we've agreed upon and that's how we will be reporting and that everything else is really standard in the u.s and that you know they have to kind of see that this is like a two-way agreement you know that we're need to protect ourselves so um i do know that that is a red flag however our contacts in the US are so lovely. They're so understanding. Um, they're really excited about the partnership. They're looking to launch like two more major skincare brands in the US in the next year and have already said, you know, this is where we see our partnership going. Um, they've been nothing but just appreciative and reasonable. So it's not them. It's lo And look, guys, you know I'm a lawyer. Anyone who's on here that doesn't know, I'm an attorney. <laughs> That's my like former life. Um, I was a litigator for four years, so I don't want to be in any kind of like litigation with them or anything. Like obviously the contract is in place to protect us and I don't really want to enforce it with a company in China and that's between me and you. It's not anything I would ever love to be a part of, but um, we do need to see that this is a partnership and that there's like a give and take here with the contract because they can't just cut out all our protections. Um, and certainly get results are not guaranteed, right? So that's where we are right now. When I get off this live, I have to go put on my lawyer hat. And, um, you know, Shauna, who works in my agency, has been very supportive as well in giving um, clarity around how we can position it to the client. And like, because now we're, we're kind of, there's friction. So we have to still be like, we're so excited, right? Like, let's not kick off on a negative foot um, we're so excited. We want to work with you. Um, you know, so it's like striking the balance between not getting walked all over because 
that's not how we operate and you know protecting ourselves and also having our partnerships start off on the right foot so that's where we are that's where i am today right now in my business bringing on um a new client it's just sort of the hiccup we've experienced and in the agency accelerator we have um a template for a retainer agreement yeah it happens i know we got this um we have a really good template that really protects you and i would say nine times out of ten our clients just sign it and they're like let's go even savvy sophisticated large clients will sign it and just you know it's very standard retainer agreement but it also really protects you um it also protects your media lists um you know your intellectual property that's your proprietary information so if clients are like we want to see your media list you have some protection since it's a u.s contract with california state provisions yeah we do absolutely that's our choice of venue um you know we are absolutely protected they did not try to change that clause at all even though the client is also based in new jersey so um asian parent company new jersey local entity and we are here in california yeah angelina you are thinking like i'm thinking so yeah our contract is really good um i've evolved it over the years based on real life experiences and it is there to protect you it's there to protect me it is a resource available to you in the agency accelerator this is everything you need all the documents and everything so um that's what i have for you maybe next week i'll report back and let you know how it goes but um, let me know if you have any questions at all. We monitor comments here. Um, you guys, I am forever grateful that you show up to these lives. It's really embarrassing to sit here and like, even though I'm talking to myself, I know there's quite a few of you on here listening and engaging. So thank you for always showing up. It's always the, the women that are so dedicated to their success and the growth in their agencies that are here every week. And I see you. I see you doing the work and um, yes, we have that contract in the agency accelerator. And Natasha's saying I have the best stories for tomorrow clubhouse and how I spun it, just wrote it down so I don't forget. Okay, good, yeah, thank you, Natasha. Like, um, and maybe we'll create a template that we'll put in the agency accelerator. So that program is always evolving with more resources. Like we have a um, winning proposal template that's beautiful that is um, what we, oh, my stomach is like, um, it's a template that we have used to land, you know, multiple five-figure monthly retainers with clients. And um, we realize some people don't have the bandwidth to create like a full graphic design, like it's on Canva and it's fully customizable and it's beautiful. But if you don't have the time, if you just have to whip something out really fast, yeah, my stomach is like growling. Um, then we also have a written proposal template that I used in our agency for 10 years, maybe. I've been doing this 16 years. I haven't had a fancy pants, beautiful deck until very recently, probably the last six years. I guess that's not recently, but a decade of a, writ of a proposal template that was just a written one. And we landed all kinds of clients with it. So we have that as a literal template. So you just change out all of the information. Um, so either one that's in the, the, in the accelerator. Like I said, it's all designed to land clients, make you more money, keep clients in the door, protect you um, and help you scale your agency. So yes, Angela, it is in there. Um, but that's what I have for you. Okay, guys, um, thank you for being here. Mwah. We will see you on Club, we'll hear you on Clubhouse tomorrow. Come with questions. Raise your hand if you want to jump on and chat with the panel. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Have a great day. I'm going to eat so I can feed my, that template got me one of my dream clients that made my, I made it mine and I got it. And I got it. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mo. That's exactly what it's there for. Customize it. Make it your own. Um, and then now that you have it, it's done. And then every time you talk to a new client, you just change out a few of the elements of the, of the deck and it's very customized for that client. It's really good. Angela, it might even be offered as a bonus. I don't know. It's kind of a bonus, I think. But Angela, if you join the accelerator, it's like a pay in full bonus, I think. If you join it, um, we'll find a way to get that for you. Okay? Yeah, we'll find a way. 
I think we will we'll make it happen <laughs> I think I know someone that can make it happen so um it's really good anyway okay I really am going I'm gonna go eat and I love you all and we'll see you on Clubhouse tomorrow 1 p.m pacific bye guys <laughs>